Hi, I want to welcome Roberto Coronado. He is Senior Vice President in Charge and Senior Economist at the Dallas Federal Reserve Bank, El Paso branch. And Roberto, welcome. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to speak to our students. Um, I'm wondering if you can share some highlights or uh, some details about yourself. Thank you, Cynthia. I appreciate the opportunity. Thanks for, for giving me the floor and I'm excited about our conversation because we're going to be talking about economics, uh, you know, something that is close to both of our hearts. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So a little bit about myself, uh, born and raised in, in Ciudad Juarez. I attended my formative schooling years there, you know, all the way to high school and then decided to come to pursue my uh, bachelor's at the University of Texas at El Paso. And uh, that's how I came to, to El Paso, I came to UTEP, did my undergrad there, and then uh, eventually moved into the Master's of Science in Economics, which I believe you and I actually uh, were classmates in a class here and there, uh, which I, I, I remember with uh, lots of, uh, we had a lot of fun back then studying economics and time series and a little bit of econometrics. And, uh, and so I, I, when I was pursuing my master's at UTEP, I got the opportunity to land at an, an internship with the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas here locally in El Paso. And uh, I've been with the bank 19 years. You know, I've managed to transition and, and uh, move from, from an internship to a full-time career. And in fact, that's been my, my entire career with the Dallas Fed. Uh, later on in, in, my, in, in my career with the bank, I got the opportunity to go to the University of Houston and be able to pursue a PhD in economics there. So I transferred to our Houston office there and spent there about three years. Came back to El Paso and finished my grad studies from here. You know, I went there, did all the, the coursework, began the dissertation process, came back to El Paso, and from here finished the dissertation process. And uh, since then, you know, I've stayed with the bank. And I, today, I, in addition to be an economist with the research department, I also get to do a little bit of uh, other uh, roles within the bank. I'm the branch manager for the El Paso branch of the Dallas Fed, but I also get to lead, you know, a few groups within at the district level for, for the bank, the economic education team, as well as law enforcement and, and a few other committees that I'm participating within the bank. So, uh, you know, I, I've, I've gone a little bit beyond the research department and, and gone into some of the operational side of the bank as well. Wow, that's really fascinating. I didn't realize that it has already been 19 years. So it's been yes. quite a while. I, I know, time flies, absolutely. And you've had fun. Absolutely, it's been very rewarding. You know, it's, you know, one of the things, and I know we'll talk about this later, but you know, one of the things that I've never realized starting my career is that the number of times you have to reinvent yourself. Uh, and I've done that multiple times I mean, if you were to ask me 19 years ago when I joined as an intern that I was going to have the items and the roles that I have in my portfolio, I would say, no, you're crazy. There's no way that's going to happen. I'm not going to go there. The opportunities will not come, but they have. Uh, and you just simply have to reinvent yourself. That, that's, that's what you have to do. I, I think that's such a really good point. And I think studying economics gives you a good platform so that you can branch out, you know how to think about things and you know how to process information so that you can reinvent yourself. And I think it's also good because a lot of students um, think I'm going to study this and I'm going to be this for the rest of my life. And it's not true. You're constantly evolving. So exactly. that's a really good point. So what were some of the challenges that you faced in the early college years? Was there anything that made you think, oh, <laughs> can't do it? Or, you know, what? kept you motivated? Yeah, so I would say, you know, two things come to mind. So uh, when I went to college at UTEP, when I attended UTEP, probably the strongest barrier, the strongest challenge I had was language. I mean, Spanish is my first language. Uh, I will, you know, to this day, I'm working on my English, my vocabulary, my accent, how to say things properly, how to be more articulate. I mean, you name it. I mean, I, I think I will be working on building my English skill set for the rest of my career. Um, and so walking into UTEP and start taking classes in English, it was, a, oh, my God, can I do this? You know, and I remember, you know, taking uh, my first, second semester at UTEP, I was taking a, a call, call two, I think, at the time. 
And I remember going to my teacher and say, you know what, I'm sorry. I, mathematically, I think I can do things, but I have no idea what you're asking me because of the language. Would it be possible if I can bring an English Spanish dictionary so I can know and read what you're asking me and then hopefully answer the question? Uh, so that tells you the level of, I mean, the barrier that I had to go through. Uh, that was through college. And then when I went to University of Houston for the PhD, as much as I got myself ready or thought so, you know, from a theoretical perspective, you know, knowing your theory and knowing your basics in economics, I did a bunch of, uh, took a bunch of math classes and quantitative classes, statistics, probability analysis, you name it. I thought I was ready. But the level of degree that they require from a quantitative uh, perspective was pretty intense. And so I, uh, it was a big challenge going through grad school, uh, you know, basically keeping up with, with the quantitative aspect of it. Uh, those two things would be probably the strongest barriers that I face at UTEP and then at University of Houston. Mm. So out of curiosity, let me ask you, do you use all that quantitative skill in your, in your work? I do. I, I do. So, you know, interestingly enough, so when I finished grad school, and I, I would say, so I've been with the bank close to 20 years, as I said to you, as I mentioned to you, the first half of the, my career had, was strictly with the research department. And definitely that those skill sets, I use them day in, day out. That was my eight to five job. And that's all I did, right? Crunch the numbers, run models, you know, go through uh, briefings. I mean, you name it. It's knowing what's going on in the economy uh, and have the skill set and, 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 and the ability to, in a rigorous way, to analyze economic conditions. Uh, the last 20 years, I'm sorry, the last 10 years of my 20 year career, I've, I do a little bit of economics today. I don't do as much as I used to, but, but to your point, you know, the, the quantitative, the rigorous way of analyzing a problem, you know, economists, we often, you know, joke with ourselves that we always have two hands, right? You know, the way we are trained, the way we are, yeah, trained to think about problems and issues is you peel the onion and you take layer by layer and each layer you see you try to optimize, you try to solve, you try to diagnose the issue. And so I, I, and to this day, I think I drive some of my colleagues crazy, some of my relatives crazy, because I can argue a problem in six different directions. Uh, and, and that's how we are trained. I mean, that's our training and that's what we do. And so, yes, so to this day, even though I don't do strictly a lot of economics today, uh, the background and, and the tool set continues to be extremely helpful. I see. Well, let me ask you, what was that moment when you decided to be an economist? Did you always know you wanted to be an economist or was there one thing that made you go, oh, I need to, I need to study what's going on? You know what, you know, growing up, so as I mentioned to you, growing up in, in Ciudad Juarez, you know, uh, at the time we lived there and the, most of my family was there, but we had relatives in El Paso and we used to come, you know, on, on the weekends to the retail stores, to the movie theaters, uh, to the zoo, uh, and, uh, you know, as a little kid, I, I remember observing differences, you know, how the city, the infrastructure, the way people behave, the way the economy seemed to work, the, the number of stores that were here that were not there. And I remember asking a lot of questions to my parents, a lot of whys, you know, why do they have these? Why we don't have that? Why we have these? Why they don't have that? That kind of thing. And then uh, I think one thing led to the next, and I realized that perhaps economics would allow me to maybe answer some of those questions. And that's why, you know, when you think about my research agenda and, and what my specialties have been in, in the field of economics, it's around border issues and U.S.-Mexico economic issues. Because since I was growing up, I always had those sort of questions going through my mind. Uh, and so I, I remember being, I don't know, 10, 12 years old and telling people that I wanted to be an economist. And of course, people laugh, people joke. Uh, and, and quite frankly, I thought I knew what the economics was at that age. Of course, I did not know that. But, but you know, even, even as I start taking classes in high school in Juarez and then eventually in college, uh, I really found it really interesting, really challenging to some, to some aspects intuitive to, to other aspects, you know, in, in some cases it came easy, in some cases it came as a challenge, 
but really fascinating and and I stick to it and and that's why I decided to pursue a career there. You know, that's so interesting. I didn't even know what an economist was when I was 10 years old, but I did have that same experience of going back to what to Juarez and El Paso and going, why are things so different? What, you know, why can we find papaya and avocados in Juarez and not in El Paso? Because when I grew up, you couldn't find exactly. avocados or papayas in the grocery store because of the trade issues. So exactly. that is so fascinating that, you know, our little minds think, think like that. Um, you know, El Paso Community College has a very diverse student base. We have early college high school students, we have military veterans, we have traditional and non-traditional students. Um, what advice or words of wisdom can you share with them to keep them on, the, on their educational path and to keep moving forward? Yeah, so I, I would say, you know, definitely investing in yourselves. Uh, investing in your skill sets, in your knowledge, in your uh, uh, in yourselves, it, it's it's important. I, I do understand and realize that each of us have different uh, uh, commitments, you know, family-wise, economic-wise, and some of us may need to work full-time and go to school part-time. Others, it's the opposite. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, what I would my advice would be really make the effort to invest in yourself, invest in your education, invest in your skill set, because it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to pay dividends. I mean, I know, and I can throw you a gazillion statistics as to why to stay in college and why to keep studying. Um, but, but I think it pays off. And I think the, the higher you go in your educational attainment, it goes back to the conversation we we're having at the beginning, Cynthia, about that you will be building the skill set, you will be building the resiliency to reinvent yourself. And, and, and if we've learned of anything over the last six months because of the global pandemic is that, you know, life can change in a blink of an eye and jobs have been eliminating, industries are struggling that six months ago were thriving, new industries have come up, new businesses are being, you know, uh, uh, built up and, and, and established. So, you know, having a college education is going to equip you, it's going to make those transitions and those reinventions of yourself a lot easier. It's, I'm not going to say it's going to be pain free, but it's a lot easier if you have a college degree, whether it's in economics or in accounting or industrial engineering, uh, those transitions are a lot easier than if you just have a high school degree. Uh, I, I'm afraid that's 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 a reality and and then also i would like to believe that you know the newer generations if you are going through community college probably you're going to be reinventing yourself a number of times probably more times than what you and i had to reinvent ourselves uh, i think our parents and grandparents they began as a lawyer as an accountant and they did all their, their careers today that's not entirely true some people do that but they are becoming the exception, not the norm. And so having a college degree will allow you to just keep reinventing yourself. That is so true. Um, I think you're, you're spot on in, in, in focusing our students on just being prepared and getting as many arrows in the quiver as they can because you just never know what might happen and it's always best to, to be prepared. And Absolutely. So, hey, I really want to thank you for joining us. Um, I think um, our students are going to love to hear what you had to say. And um, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. We really appreciate it. Thank you so You're, much. You're very welcome. It's been my pleasure. Thank you.